Hello Year 7, Miss Montgomery here again. Welcome to your fifth lesson of geography. Um, hope you're all doing safe and well still and um, taking care of yourselves. And um, yeah, so in this lesson we're going to look at what is the greenhouse effect. So this is a term that we use in geography uh, when we describe um, about the world warming up and it's linked very closely to global warming and climate change. So during this lesson, we're going to find out what the greenhouse effect actually is and how it is caused um, and then the effects of it. So I just want you to, first of all, do a spend five minutes or so doing your do it now. So I'll talk you through it first and then I want you to pause the video and spend about five minutes or so, no more than five minutes, just doing the question. So graph A, what we've got here, shows the global average temperature. So that is the temperature around the world. So what is going on in this graph here? And you'll notice that you've got the temperature going up on this axis, and then you've got the time going up on this axis of the year. Graph B then shows the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So again, you've got the percentage of carbon dioxide going up on this axis, and you've got the years going up on this axis. So I want you to just pause the video, write a sentence or two to describe what is happening in the graphs and what do you think that is showing. If you get that done quite quickly and quite easily, then I want you to draw a graph to predict what you think might happen in the next 100 years. OK, pause the video now. OK, so before we go through the answers, let's just look at the um, learning objectives of the lesson. So we're going to look at what is the greenhouse effect and how does it cause global warming? Now, why are we doing that? What's in it for you? Well, we're going to look at it because you're going to understand how the effects of the world heating up, um, how, how that affects the world and how do your lives or our lives contribute to it. And we're going to get there by drawing and labelling a diagram and explaining the greenhouse effect by answering questions. So the answers I've given for the do it now. So again, like always, if you've got something similar to this, fantastic. If not, then you might want to add this in as well. So graph A shows me that the average temperature of the planet is increasing or rising or going up. Graph B shows me that the average carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is also increasing, increasing, rising or going up. So this shows me that the rise in temperature is directly linked with the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. The carbon dioxide, you may or may not know, is a gas and it's created by the burning of what we call fossil fuels. So what I want you to do first before we move on with the lesson is I want you to pause the video now and I want you to just come up with a definition. What are fossil fuels? Pause the video now. OK, so this is my definition of fossil fuels. So fossil fuels are formed from natural processes of dead organisms fossilizing in the ground. So what that means is things that die, animals and all sorts of different organisms, living organisms, they die, they go into the ground and then over time they become fossilized. And that's due to the pressure of the earth squashing down and compressing them. As the earth is doing that compression, these dead organisms turn into coal, oil and gas. And then they are then extracted. Extracted means taken from. So they are then extracted from the ground and used to run many things in society. So these three things here, coal, oil and gas, are examples of fossil fuels. So then the greenhouse effect is the trapping of these gases in the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is the area of so the air all around the world. So the gases, they tr get trapped inside the atmosphere. The process of it being enhanced. OK, so enhanced means that it's happening a lot quicker or a lot more than it naturally would, because gases would always get trapped in the atmosphere. But due to the greenhouse effect or the enhanced greenhouse effect, it's happening more 
than it normally than it would naturally. And that's because of the greenhouse. Uh, sorry, that's because of the fossil fuels are creating certain types of gases, which we call the greenhouse gases. And those gases are carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide. So both of these two here, they are created from the fossil fuels being burned. Then you've got methane which is probably one of the strongest gases and methane is caused a lot from the burning of um, agriculture and a lot of animal products and then you've got chloro i can't even say the word sorry um chlorofluorocarbons i'm sorry if i pronounce that incorrectly um, and then that's come from the aerosols and then you've got water vapor so these are the five main uh greenhouse gases that we have on the planet and these these are produced through the burning of fossil fuels the burning of coal gas and oils um, and then also other factors that are burnt from um, agricultural aspects and aerosols and all of these five things together are what fill up our atmosphere okay now what happens is as they become more and more and more used, the atmosphere creates a thick blanket called a chemical blanket, which is basically just the gas. OK, so if that thick blanket is in our atmosphere, then what happens is as the heat from the sun comes through, it pushes through because it's very, very strong. because It's coming from the sun. And then usually what would happen is some of the heat would reflect out but some of it would stay and that's because it's the sun rays have lost some of its energy so as it releases out not all of it has the energy to go now what happens now because of the greenhouse effect is because it's thicker the atmosphere is thicker the sun rays can still get through because again the sun's got a lot of energy but the amount of heat that can escape is far less OK, and that's because not only have the rays not got as much energy, but also there's a lot of a thick blanket that they have to try and break through, which they struggle with. So therefore, the atmosphere becomes warmer. Like a greenhouse inside of a greenhouse is very, very warm. So your task is going to be drawing a diagram similar to this. So you'll notice um, that we've got a nice big arrows here coming down from the sun where the trees and everything are. And then you've got a lot of um, the heat escaping with a little bit coming back down. You'll then see that we've drawn a factory here, with, which is creating a lot of fossil fuels, burn a lot of fossil fuels. So you'll notice that this blanket here is called a chemical blanket and it's getting thicker. So now the amount of heat that is escaping is far less than the amount here and lots more is getting trapped in so this whole picture here is an example of the greenhouse effect so this bit of chemical blanket is acting as the greenhouse if you think if you've got a greenhouse in your garden the glass um, keeps the heat in so that's why it's very good for growing things like tomatoes okay because it's trapping all of that heat inside so if you can imagine that this atmosphere layer is purely the same as a as glass in a greenhouse so i want you to draw this um, diagram out or one similar to this you can make it look it's this is your diagram however you understand it i want that to um to shine through and then you'll see that all of these labels down here need to be added to your diagram if you believe that there's more labels that need to be added I want you to add those as well so pause the video I want you to spend about 10 minutes or so doing your diagram then we'll go through the answers after that and then you've got some questions to answer so pause the video now OK, so I hope that you've all done your diagram and added all the labels, because remember, in geography, it's not about being an artist. It's about having labels. That's what we are most concerned about. So let's go through where I believe the answers of the labels should be. OK, so here you've got Earth is heated by the sun during the day. So during the day, the sun shines its beams down and the Earth becomes heated. 
Earth loses heat at night. Some of the heat is kept in by the layer of gases in the atmosphere. So all of the warmth goes out. Some of it goes through the atmosphere and back out to the sky, whereas some of it comes back and keeps us warm. However, carbon dioxide increases the thickness of the layer of gas. So that's this area here. So burning fossil fuels, which we do in factories and in cars um, and just basically everything in our day to day life, all of that burn of fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide, and methane, releases all of the gases, which creates this thickening blanket. A thick layer of gas means that more heat is kept in. OK, and therefore the earth gets hotter. So I'd like to think that your diagram looks something similar to this with these labels in. But like always, if you can you can think of more, then please add more. This is quite a basic picture. OK, so now we've got some key terms. So I would like you to pause the video again and I want you to go through and write what the key term is and then which one of these is the correct definition. You've got about four minutes to do this. Pause the video, off you go. OK, so I hope to think that you've all done that now. So let's go through the answers. Um, oh, for some reason, my slide has not come up for that, but that's fine. I did have it all nice and colourful. So uh, we can go through the answers together anyway. OK, so you've got climate change, greenhouse effect, global warming and carbon dioxide. So climate change, which one of these did you have it linked with? The gradual warming of the Earth's atmosphere, a gas that is found in the Earth's atmosphere, any change in global temperatures and precipitation, which we know means rainfall. We've learned that a few times over time due to natural human activity or the process whereby gases trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere, causing the world to warm up. So the correct one for climate change would be any change in the global temperatures and precipitation over time due to natural or human activity. OK, so climate change, that basically is saying it happens on, because of natural activity as well as human activity. Then you've got the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is the process whereby gases trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere, causing the world to warm up. Then you've got global warming. So global warming is the gradual warming of the Earth's atmosphere. And last but not least, carbon dioxide is a gas that is found in the Earth's atmosphere. So your final task of the lesson is to complete the following sentences. I also would like you to try and do the extension. I would, I would like everyone ideally to try and do the extension. So we would die without greenhouse gases because. So I want you to explain your opinion of why you think people would die without the greenhouse gases. Or if you don't agree with that, then I want you to write that down as well. The level of greenhouse gas in the air is. Greenhouse gases can, can harm us because. The more farming we humans do, the more. When we drive our cars, we. So these are sentences that you need to complete. I also want you to look at the three facts below. And I want you to answer this question, could they help to explain why carbon dioxide emissions are rising? Give your reasons and answer in full sentences. So fact A, the world's population is rising fast. Could that help to explain why carbon dioxide emissions are rising? Emissions is putting something out. Many countries that were once poor are now developing very fast. 
and aeroplane flights are getting cheaper and cheaper. So these three facts, could they explain the reasons why there is more carbon dioxide in the air? You can also link it back to the graph that we looked at in the beginning. OK, if you want to get super high marks, you can draw into using all of these different resources that you've used throughout the whole lesson. So that's it from me, Year 7s. You can take only about 15 minutes or so, uh, 15, 20 minutes to complete the following sentences and answer the facts in the extension box. And like always, um, when you finish that, you can email it to me. My email address is re dot montgomery at hasler.org.uk. Just make sure you put your name in the subject bar. And if you need any help with any of it, please email me. If you have any questions, um, you can email me any questions at all about any of your schoolwork. Um, just make sure you're keeping in touch with your teachers. We're all here for you. We are all still working. And I hope to see you soon.